we previously looked at um, what happens when we transform um, exp well uh, exponential graphs with base e and also what happens when we transform uh, graphs of the natural log okay so we'll just do a quick recap and then we'll look at how to graph uh, certain graphs to base e and certain graphs with a natural log so if we look at the graph of y equal to k e to the power of nx just to recap that if we have a number in front of the base right that acts as a vertical stretch so it'll stretch the graph either increasing or decreasing depending on the value and then the number n in front of x is a horizontal right and how the horizontal works is if it's being multiplied by n then the stretch factor is 1 over n so in other words if it was 2 then everything's being halved okay, and likewise when we look at the natural log again we have a vertical shift happening in front here and then we have in front of x again this is just a horizontal shift again by factor 1 over a and then we have a b over here and that b is actually a horizontal shift right and remembering that if we have plus b it's a shift to the left and if it's minus b it's a shift to the right okay now we don't actually have to know these but it does help because it allows us to kind of pre-work out what the graph's going to look like now if we look at an exponential graph to base e and the natural log of x okay we can see that for e to the power of x it's always greater than zero for all values of x okay and we'll notice that as x approaches negative infinity we can see that the y solutions get closer and closer and closer but never touch zero so we can say that as x approaches negative infinity y is approaching zero and actually that causes the x axis to then become an, a horizontal asymptote then as we see x approaching positive infinity we can see that well y is shooting off into infinity as well and then for the natural log if we look at the natural log we'll notice that it only exists for values where x is greater than zero and by definition when we look at logs we could only look at logs with uh, positive bases and positive values in any case right and you'll notice that as x approaches zero this time right, as it's getting closer and closer to zero y approaches negative infinity and so we have an asymptote on the y-axis and likewise as x approaches positive infinity y also approaches positive infinity okay so let's consider some things when we want to sketch these graphs okay we can predetermine what happens by thinking about what's being applied to the graph what transformations are happening right and then based on that we can determine do we need to work out y intercepts that's when x equal equals zero x intercepts that's when y is equal to zero right both of the graphs has an as have asymptotes so we need to consider where they are they shift as the graph is transformed and then we can as we saw we can consider for the base e to power x as x approaches negative infinity where is y approaching so where's the asymptote and then for the natural log as x approaches zero where's y approaching so where's the asymptote there so with that in mind let's just look at the first graph so here we have the graph y equal to 3 e to the power of minus 2x minus 5. so there are many things happening to this graph we have a vertical stretch of 3 we have a horizontal stretch of 2 but not just that we also have this minus 2x which is causing a reflection about the y axis and then we have a vertical shift down five units okay so if we just considered what a normal exponential graph looked like like this okay we already know we have a reflection meaning the graph is going to switch from left to right so it's going to go in that direction then it's also being stretched by three units right and then it's got a horizontal stretch of two and then it's also being shifted down five units so 
intuitively we can see we have now also got an x-intercept to take care of. Okay? So just by looking at what the graph the equation is, we already can determine kind of what we need to look for. So let's look for the intercepts. So we always start with the y-intercept usually, so that's when x is equal to 0. Okay, so when x is equal to 0, from our equation, we'll have y equal to 3 e to the power of minus 2 times 0, which is going to become just 1 minus 5. So anything to the power of 0 is just 1. And so we're going to have y equal to 3 minus 5. And so y-intercept of minus 2. And that kind of makes sense from our visual, or our intu intuition. Okay, let's find the y-intercept. So the y-intercept, sorry, the x-intercept. So the x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. So we'll just make y equal to 0. And now what we need to do is we need to solve an exponential equation. Right, which is what we've been learning over the past couple of weeks. So what we'll do is we'll move the 5 and the 3 to the other side, so we're going to get e to the power of minus 2x equal to 5 over 3. Right, we want to solve for the exponent, so we're going to convert this into logarithmic form. Okay, so if I want to make the exponent the subject, right, I need to take logs of both sides, and the log of base e is the natural log, so that will be 5 over 3. And then if I want to solve for x, x is going to be equal to, well, minus a half, because that's what I'd have to multiply to get to x, natural log of 5 over 3. Okay, now we want to graph this, so we need to have kind of like an actual value. So if we push the SD button on our calculator, it will give us a value of minus 0 0.255 approximately, okay, to three significant figures. Right, so what we have done now is we've determined what the x and the y intercepts are. So from here, we need to work out our asymptotes, okay? And so when we're working out our asymptotes, we'll take the equation and we're going to look at what happens when x approaches positive infinity and uh, what happens when x approaches negative infinity. So let's look. As x approaches positive infinity, okay, here we have the equation y equal to 3x to the power, oh, sorry, 3e to the power of minus 2, right? And we're putting infinity in here, minus 5, okay? So if I put in infinity in place of x, right? Remember that this is minus 2, so what's going to happen is this is actually 3, and it's actually over, right, because that minus 2 brings it down to the denominator, e to the power of 2 infinity, and if we have infinity on the denominator, it's a number that is so small that it actually approaches 0, and so what happens is as x approaches infinity here, this thing just becomes 0, and we're just left with minus 5. All right, so as x approaches positive infinity, y actually approaches minus 5, and that actually is our asymptote. All right, and then as x approaches negative infinity, in this equation, y equal to 3e to the power of minus 2, and here we have minus infinity, minus 5. So these two minuses here are going to cancel out, and this is going to be e to the power of infinity, which is just an extraordinarily massive number, and what we can say is y will approach infinity. Okay, And again, if we go back to our graph here, you can see that as x was approaching negative infinity, y was approaching infinity because we had a reflection of the base e graph okay okay and now we're ready to graph so we can draw our set of axes All right we can put in our asymptote we had an asymptote at minus five all right, and we can label that as y equal to 5, indicating it is an asymptote. 
right? Some other features that we had were the y-intercept was minus 2. So somewhere around here, minus 2. We had an x-intercept of minus 0 0.25. So we can say maybe somewhere there, minus 0 0.255. And we know that the line is going to approach the asymptote and then shoot off into infinity. And it's going to be a reflection of the normal e-graph. So traveling in this direction through our intercepts and all the way up. Can obviously can be a little bit more smooth than that. Okay, here we're asked to sketch the graph of a logarithmic function. Okay, so what we'll do is again intuitively we'll look at the graph and we'll say, well, this has got a vertical stretch, okay? It's got a horizontal stretch of a half, right? Because it's a factor of one over two. And it's also got a translation. It's being moved five units. And this is positive, which means the graph's being moved that way, five units, okay? So let's think about this just intuitively what's happened. This is what the logarithmic function usually looks like, okay? It's been stretched and squished, right? which might just change the shape into something that's just a little bit, it uh, increases a little bit faster, right? And then most importantly, this whole graph has been shifted over five units to the left, right? And what's going to end up happening is because of that, we're going to end up with both x and y intercepts, right? So the important thing is a logarithmic function has a vertical asymptote, and we can see that this vertical asymptote has shifted somewhere off to the left. Yeah, so we'll have to find out where that is in a minute. So now that we have a general idea of what we are going to draw, we can find the intercepts. So the y-intercept, that's just when x is equal to 0, right? Then y is equal to 4 times the natural log of 0 plus 5. Right, which is equal to 4 natural log 5, and you can stick that into your calculator and it'll give you an answer of approximately 6.44, okay, to three significant figures. So that is what our intercept is. Okay, to find the x-intercept, we can say, well, that's when y is equal to 0, then 4 natural log 2x plus 5 is equal to 0, and fortunately for us, we have learned how to solve logarithmic equations, okay? So we can divide both sides by 4. We'll get the natural log 2x plus 5 equal to 0, right? And what we can do is, remember, we can change this into base e, so we can change this back into exponential form. That's the exponent. This is the value, and the base here is e. And so e to the power of 0 is equal to 2x plus 5. Uh, anything to the power of 0 is just 1, so 2x plus 5 is equal to 1, which means that x is equal to minus 2. So there's our x-intercept, right? Now, for logarithmic functions, we need to consider where the asymptote is again. All right, and we know that it only exists for positive values of x, All right? So we can only have this thing here can only be positive. So, All right, so what we'll do is we're going to write our equation y equal to 4 times the natural log of 2x plus 5. And we need to remember that this thing inside the bracket has to be positive, right? Our log law state that the base and the value have to be greater than 0, so that means 2x plus 5 must be greater than 0, and therefore x must be greater than minus 2.5, okay? So that is our smallest possible value of x to satisfy the equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to consider both ends of x, right? So as x approaches positive infinity, if you look at the equation y equal to 4 times the natural log of 2x plus 5, if we had to put infinity in place here, it would just become infinity, and so y would also approach infinity. And as if we had to say, well, as x approaches, well, the smallest possible value we've determined for x 
is minus 2.5. It can't be 2 point minus 2.5, but we kind of want to get an idea of where is y approaching as x is approaching that value. Okay, so y is equal to 4 times the natural log of 2 times minus 2.5 plus 5. And what we can do is we can think about values of x, right? We can't put minus 2.5 in here because that would cause this thing to become 0, right? But as we put numbers closer and closer and closer to that value in, you will notice that y will start getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it'll start approaching negative infinity, which is kind of what we expected to do if we look at our original graph. So from here, we can sketch. So this time we have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, a horizontal asymptote at about x equal to minus 2.5. We had a y-intercept of minus 2. And we had, sorry, an x-intercept of minus 2 and a y-intercept of about 6.44. So this was minus 2 and somewhere up here 6.44. And we kind of know that general shape is heading in that direction. Okay, and we can also just label the equation.